So if you just keep going, same procedure applied between B and G. Okay. So uh, I'm going to draw the whole rigid body, okay, B and D. But I'm going to indicate point G now. And now you draw the acceleration vectors at B and at G only. That's all. Okay. Forget about D now. So I have acceleration at B pointing straight to the left, which I found earlier. AG is the unknown. Now, the direction of G is not known. So we don't know whether it's going to point at any angle at all. And once again, we do know something. Assume something. Okay? So in the very beginning of this uh, analysis procedure, I've assumed that this AG points sort of in this direction. Okay? So it's just consistent okay, with my free body diagram that I drawn way earlier draw kind of the same direction. Okay. AG vector, direction arbitrary, so I can decompose them into I and J direction. So that's my AG J. That's my AG I. So or AG X and Y, it doesn't matter. Okay, same thing. Now um, pure translation. I'm going to use, again, point B as my reference, so AB and AB here, and then pure rotation, okay, so point B is fixed. So for point G, now I have two components of acceleration, okay, and it's the relative acceleration, okay, because now it's pure rotation, okay, as if it is purely rotating, okay, so you need to use the, you know, uh, relative motion, right? So it's Acceleration of G relative to B, tangent component, and then this is the normal component. The tangent component equals R alpha. R is the distance between B and G. Okay? So R, B, G. And then alpha is the alpha is the entire rigid body. Okay, so alpha of B, D, which was just found earlier. And then the normal component is R, B, G, and omega of the entire rigid body, B, D, squared. Okay? So, here's the equation. A, G vector equals A, B vector plus these two components right here. Okay? So, vector and vector. And then just continue and expand it. Okay? Normal. So for AG vector, I have AG of I, this negative because it points to the to the left. Okay. AG of I and then I component and then plus since point up, so AG J, okay. the J direction equals A B vector which has been found. Four and that is fifty nine point two one seven six and it is going to the left, so negative i plus this guy right here it points in this direction, so r alpha and r in this case is the distance between b and g, which is half of the distance of b, which is 0.15 meters times. Alpha BD, which has been found earlier, and that is 46.266. Okay, so that's our alpha. Now we need to include the direction. Okay, the direction of this guy, once again, this angle is 36.86 degrees. So the I component is to the left, so negative of sine 36.86. I and positive J cosine. Okay? Plus this last term, normal component, which is R omega squared. Again, R is 0.15. And omega BD has been found also before. And that is 7.854 square. And then the direction, which is 
negative cosine of 326 i and negative sine 36.63 j. That's it. Okay, so now to solve for the unknown. Here I have two components, all right, the two unknowns. The rest are all numbers. So, I direction, J direction, okay? And turns out my A, C, G, I component equals, okay, plugging all the numbers, purely in the I direction only, turns out to be negative 70.785 meter per second square. Then ACGJ component, again you go through the math, turns out it's zero. It's zero. Which means this AG vector is straight left in the I direction. Okay? So, now we can actually update our picture. Okay? So, so I can actually redraw this whole thing. Right? So B, G, and D. So the iteration of G actually goes straight to the left. My A G. Okay? And seventy point seven eight five meters per second square. And then my A B goes to the left as well. Okay, so now we found A C G and alpha BD. So now we can go back to the kinetics equation.